A very good morning to you all, or good afternoon, depending on your time zone. Uh, welcome to this webinar, where we will be talking about some of the uh, data center trends that are happening in today's market. And we will also will be talking about how you actually can, uh, through certification, benefit and be part of this exciting times. Um, just for the logistics, um, if you have a microphone it would be great if you could put it on mute otherwise everybody will be hearing your secrets so if you could uh, take a minute to uh, click it off then that would be great um, just to give you an idea of what we're going to discuss uh, today in this webinar it will take you about uh, 60 minutes uh, first we'll have a quick chat about EPI who we are for those of you who are not so familiar with us we will be talking about some of the trends that are happening in today's market, um, talk about the data center training and IT training that EPI has to offer, and then come the freebies. We will give you some uh, tools uh, that can help you with planning your own career, or if you are managing a team, you know how you could actually use those steel tools to manage your team. So first of all, let's have a look at uh, who EPI actually is. Uh, we are originally from the UK in a place called Oxfordshire, where we started the company in 1987. And then in 1999, we started the Singapore office, which is now serving as the global headquarters. So we are uh, celebrating this year our 30th anniversary. Um, and we will be celebrating that with our customers and partners uh, by offering some very exciting um, attractive promotions. Um, in general, we are covering every single time zone, uh, every region. We have nine uh, offices uh, spread across the world, and we are working through a strong partner network, uh, whereby we are present now in, in roughly 60 plus countries and serving over 130 cities. In terms of the focus of EPI, there are basically three things that we focus on. First of all, the design uh, evaluation and design validation. This is for those customers who actually are in the process of designing and building a data center. And we assist them to make sure that before the contractors start the work, that the designs at least are you know, meeting the business needs of the customer. Once the final build has been completed, we normally do a audit and certification of the data center. And that could be done at both the physical facilities, the power, the cooling infrastructure, the building, the security, etc., as well as the operational side of the data center, the day-to-day -day governance, operations, and maintenance. And we are also in the professional training. And that is where we will talk a bit more about uh, in today's uh, session. So those are the three key focus areas for EPI. We are well known in the industry. Um, um, fortunately, we have been uh, receiving quite a bit of attention, uh, both in magazines and publications, as well as we've been awarded a variety of, uh, of uh, rewards and awards, uh, which is always a nice endorsement for the company. We also have been very well known in the market to be very leading edge. We have uh, launched a large number of world's firsts, as we call them. Um, in 2014, we were the first ones to start, and we still are the only ones, uh, to provide training for the market for consultants and auditors uh, who are following the 942 standards, and I will talk about that a little bit later on. In 2015, we started with an IT training framework, and we'll discuss that one as well today, and it was the first and still is the only one fully compliant with the ECF framework, the European Competence Framework. 2015, another exciting year where we were launching our data center competence framework. Again, we'll talk about that a bit later. Last year, we did the data center operations standards, the world's first and only standards that are telling people how to actually manage data centers. And we also released our data center career planning tool. And again, on that one, we will be talking in more detail as well today. So why would people work with EPI? Well, there are a couple of points that we think are very important. First of all, we are the first in the market, and we are by far the largest data center training provider in the market. Even if you would take the second runner-up and the third runner-up together, 
and you multiply that times, you know, four or five, six times, they are still not meeting the number of people that we have trained. So we are really very well known in the market. Another reason why people typically like to work uh, with EPI is because we are truly data center experts. We are not a company uh, that have its origin in another industry and now try to embark on an exciting new industry. This is what we have been doing for the last 30 years. We design and build data centers for a living. And that is also the practical experience that we are uh, using in the training. As such, we also are invited in many committees. So we are part of the TA committee, Big C, SS committee, and many others where we are seek for our expertise in this data center field. We are vendor neutral. We really don't care what is your favorite UPS or your favorite genset, etc. In our training and in our consulting, we really talk about methodologies. We talk about standards. We talk about technology. And it's really up to you to choose who you think is the best match for your business requirements. So we give a truly impartial uh, advice to our customer. For the training, we have totally independent and impartial accreditation. So, so our courses are totally vendor neutral. They based on standards and they have a proper flow that will allow customers to really absorb the knowledge in a proper way. And that is all thoroughly vetted by an external organization, Exim. We'll talk about that a bit later as well. Um, they also write the exam and they conduct the exam. So basically it's fully impartial and a lot of customers really truly like this one. So overall, we have a long history and track record. Uh, we are very global. We are clearly focused on the data center and uh, truly leading in the industry. And we have been fortunate enough to grow uh, very rapidly. So in that sense, we're very lucky. And we're also very lucky that many customers have endorsed us. Here are just a snapshot of some uh, very familiar names for you. So that's in a quick uh, nutshell uh, uh, all about uh, EPI. So let's have a look at what probably excites you more is uh, you know, listening to what is actually happening in the data and the industry. And I think it's in general in the industry because we are really looking at a digital disruption and it's happening very quickly and it's happening all around us. Just have a look at this slide and you know, figure out what you think that these companies, you know, some of the very well-known names I'm sure to you, uh, have in common. Well, there is one thing really. They pretty much own nothing, not at least what they try to sell. So Airbnb is a large booking site for uh, apartments and, and rooms, etc. but they don't own a single one of them. Uh, Uber, I'm sure that most of you are familiar with that, largest taxi company in the world, yet they do not own a single physical taxi. Facebook, another very prominent one. Uh, basically all the content that is there, or I would say 99.99% is all written by others, not by Facebook themselves. So here you have an example where in the old days, if you were a particular uh, company offering a certain service, you typically owned that particular uh, product or service. And nowadays we get to deal with people that sit in the middle, connecting uh, others with others and you know, basically uh, making a good living out of that one. So it's a very big changing industry. There is also a big change in the industry in terms of what we call demographics and attitudes. Uh, recent statistics show that about 40 plus percent of the current workforce will retire in the next eight years. Now, for those that retire, probably good news. But for people like you and me dealing with day to day with customers, this is going to have an impact on us because the new workforce that is coming in is very, very different from the traditional workforce. Uh, the, today's workforce, they tend to be very, very demanding and they are less loyal. If you don't provide what they need or what they want, they just switch because switching nowadays becomes easier. Uh, they tend to be more savvy as well. And therefore they expect everything, anytime, anywhere, at any location. So all these things have a dramatic impact. In the old days, for example, if I uh, would like to buy a airline ticket, I would you know, have to go to a physical office, get a physical ticket, go to the airport, etc., etc. But nowadays everything is online. And if I in the old days had a complaint about you know, the service that I got on the flight, I would have to probably write a postcard or a long letter and then I was hoping that I got something back from the organization. 
Nowadays, I can put out a tweet or a Facebook post and I could reach literally millions of people to show them my disapproval of this, this company. So companies have to be aware that this is happening around them. And if they keep doing the old traditional way, things will be you know, very quickly disconnected with the actual consumer you're trying to serve. The CIO, yeah, big, big pressure on these guys. Why? And ladies, I should say, of course. Why? Because if you look at, say, the global IT spend, it has been pretty much flat for the last three to five years. It's about $3.5 trillion. And the bad news even is that 80% of that IT spend is really just to keep the wheels turning. Do payroll uh, processing, do order processing, and all the other things that we do on a daily, daily basis. So relatively speaking, a very small portion is only allocated to innovation. And that is where a big problem is. Because if you look at the IT spend of the consumer, it has basically quadrupled over the last 10 years. So, in other words, the consumer is innovating at lightning speed, yet organizations have not, you know, kept up with it. And since the budgets are not increasing, that means that CIOs have to find ways to cut costs from the, you know, traditional 80% IT spend uh, in order to be able to get more dollars for innovation. And that is why a lot of them are moving in different technologies and, and ways of operating. Another trend in the data center industry is the energy uh, independence, uh, distribution of energy and storage of energy. More and more, especially of the larger operators, they are really looking at independency. They want to have control over their energy. They want to move quicker to the you know, green energy sources. Obviously, if you are reliant on the public utilities, then you basically can't be greener than the public utilities are. Uh, so a lot of the larger data center operators are looking at wind energy and solar energy and all the other things. Power distribution is changing, especially in the old days. We had this big chunky UPS downstairs in the basement, so to speak, and that was feeding the whole computer room building. Nowadays, we're looking at a much more distributed type of approach. Again, a dramatic change for many of you. And of course, the never ending story about whether we should use AC power or DC power, which is continuously going on for the last 10, 15 years already. From a power storage point of view, there's also quite a lot of change. The traditional uh, shield lead asset batteries for those techies under you um, move towards lithium, IM, and other energy storage, uh, high flux capacitors, etc., becomes more and more prominent. So quite a bit of technical change in that aspect as well. We also see a trend in open architectures for data centers. Uh, two, two predominant plays in the market, are, you know, to some extent you can argue uh, they are competing. Uh, OCP, which was the first one, came out in 2011, uh, and this was basically coming out of the good old school of Facebook, etc., who designed their own hardware and basically uh, opened it up for the market to leverage of that one. Uh, in itself, great architecture, but it does require quite a bit of customization in the sense that you can't use the traditional wrecking anymore, etc. So uh, recently, a couple of years ago, uh, a so-called competing standard came up, the Open 19, which is uh, getting a little bit more traction, it seems, because it's using standard technology and standard wrecking. And obviously, that will protect the investment that customers have made so far. Security, always a hot item. And it's becoming, as you know, uh, know even more and more prominent uh, in the news of all these things that are happening. Not only the traditional attacks like the distributed uh, denial of service attacks, etc., but nowadays there is also a big portion of the attacks going to the physical infrastructure. Um, people that are attacking power infrastructure of a country, or you know, for the fun of it, open bridges remotely, etc. So this could have an impact, of course, on your data center, especially if they also break into, for example, your control and management systems. So nowadays, we don't have to be just you know, very uh, 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 focused on physical security, like the big fans and walls and boom barriers, but we also clearly need to look at the IT uh, security protection as well as the supporting uh, systems uh, protection. We also see that we need to look at, say, the resilience. There are a lot of changes in the resilience. 
in the traditional days, we normally try to build redundancy on redundancy within the physical infrastructure of an existing data center. Nowadays, there are new technologies that allow us to distribute, for example, uh, data, uh, do replication of it. So now I might have multiple data centers working together as one. So from an end user perspective, I would really don't know whether I have my data in data center one or data center 10, or if data center 10 goes down, it dynamically will shift to another one. And as an end user, I might not even know it. So quite a bit of an architectural change from the physical facility is required as well as from the IT architecture and network infrastructure. I'm sure that you have all heard of words like cloud. Nowadays, a lot of people talk about cloud as if that is the magic solution to all our IT and data center problems, which is obviously uh, not really the reality. Um, SaaS, uh, software as a service, etc. However, the reality is that you know more and more, especially of the smaller and mid-sized companies, are not always you know considering building their own facility anymore. A lot of them now take advantage of existing providers like co-location providers or cloud providers, etc., who are basically offering, you know, the IT on tap, uh, IT as a service. So over time, we see a shift that there will be less on-premise data centers uh, or enterprise data centers, as some call it, and move it more to the uh, hyperscale, colo, cloud, SaaS providers. Now, of course, it doesn't mean that all the enterprise and uh, on-premise data centers will disappear. There will always be a large uh, market for that. And don't forget that with the advent of IoT, the Internet of Things, uh, there will be so much data created that it is virtually impossible to all chunk that over a network connection to a very large remote connection uh, site. So basically, we will see what we have seen in power distribution as well, where we might have the good old hyperscale data centers, uh, and then in uh, the various remote locations, we might have those aggregation uh, points where we have smaller data centers. Standardization. Standardization in general is always good because then you, at least you have standard components, you have standard standards, so to speak. And of course, the whole aim is to make sure that you have uh, predictable quality as well as uh, simplicity uh, due to standardize, uh, standardization. And a lot of the larger scale manufacturers are banking on this. So what you will see now is more and more containerized data centers. Uh, uh, you're all familiar with shipping containers which are now fitted out with the IT as well as the facility equipment. However, manufacturers do understand that not everything is fit for a container solution. And therefore, a lot of them are also embarking on what they call the PFMs, the prefabricated modular data centers. So these are really uh, like Lego blocks that you can put in your own size and scale uh, up to your business requirements. Another trend that we see, and that is maybe the more scary one for some of you, is the AI, uh, artificial, artificial, uh, artificial excuse me, uh, intelligence. There are already quite a bit of uh, research and uh, actual execution projects going on where they try to mimic what uh, you know, people like you and I would do. Uh, Google has been experimented with a project called DeepMind, and because of that project, they have been able to reduce down their power cost because they were automatically learning how loads and, and dynamic loads were shifting up and down through the time zones and, and all that, and therefore they could switch on and off servers remotely uh, through this AI. Uh, universities are working on it, as well as Intel, uh, one of the largest, if not the largest, microprocessor uh, company in the world. Uh, they have been working on AI, AI programs as well. So this is really becoming another trend. Uh, how can we make things much more efficient uh, by embedding the intelligence into self-learning systems? So in that sense, all those science fiction movies that you've seen in the past, they might become reality very, very soon. The industry has therefore quite a bit of a challenge. Yeah, a lot of changes as you have seen, that this is just a handful of changes uh, that are very obvious, but there are many things happening as well. And the result is that there is really a lack of skills in the data center market. Uh, many research have been done showing this. Um, the problem, the educational world is not yet connected well to the actual in the industrial uh, world. This has been a disconnect, I think, for many, many years, because even in my time, they were already talking about that people that come from school still need to be retrained to make them fit for 
the today's job, so to speak. So the fact is that many people that actually are uh, working in data centers have been well trained, but typically on things like uh, uh, products, uh, like the IT infrastructure, storage infrastructure, network, and what else you have, uh, but have not been fully trained on critical things like electrical power, mechanical cooling, and all these other things. And we really need it because the data center market is growing. And so is the requirement for employment. So these are just some statistics. And again, as you know, in every statistics, there are always different ones from different research companies. But I think uh, it's not important to look at the number itself, but you know, look more at the trend. It is a growing trend. So clearly, uh, we need to make sure that we are stay relevant uh, and educated in this market. So there is really this big need for data center training. The industry is growing. We have to deal with a lack of skills in this particular area. Um, if data centers go down, since we are so reliant on IT, uh, the cost of downtime is getting more and more and more. Human error is becoming you know, a big problem. In the old days, you could push a button and maybe one application goes down. Now, if you push the wrong button, you might bring literally hundreds of customers down. Um, of course, that is a very, very dramatic change from the old days. And all in all, budgets are flat. Yeah, we need to keep innovating. Uh, we have all kinds of challenges already with power and cooling and space in most buildings. And at the same time, we're pressurized to make sure that we do it all very, very uh, energy efficient. I the, the green trend is also pushing on data centers. So clearly, we need help. And don't worry, EPI is there to help you for this particular areas. We have a program for the uh, data center professionals. Here is the very simple to understand framework. We have basically cut our course offerings in three segments. One is the design and build, one is for governance and operations, and the other one is aimed at those looking at standards and compliance. So what I would like to do is just quickly go through it in not too much detail because all the information is on our website as well, so you can download the brochures if you would really like to look at course outlines, etc. cetera. Uh, the first track. The track for the um, uh, design and build, as we call it. Uh, don't be fooled, this is not just for those that only go to design and build a data center. This can also very well be used for those that have an existing data center already and would like to understand whether they've done it right or whether they could make some further improvements. As you can three, see, three courses, CDCT, CDCS, and CDCE, um, the courses are linked to each other. Uh, with that, I mean that you must go through CDCP and pass the exam before you can go to CDCS. You must go through the CDCS, pass the exam before you can go to CDCE. Now, some people say, why can't I just jump to CDCE? Because I've been in the data center already for 20 years. Well, that might be true, but we find out, uh, we've done it in the past, we found out that very, very often people are still missing fundamental knowledge. Sometimes people have been doing something for 10 years and actually they did it 10 years wrong, okay? Um, so this is really, you know, the program that you have to go through to make sure you are well equipped for today's requirements. So a quick overview, CDCP, this is by far the most popular course that we have because it's the foundation. It's a two-day course and this two-day course will run the students through all the things you need to know about the data center. Uh, whether it's about uh, you know, where to place the data center, uh, building requirements, power requirements, cooling requirements, etc. We'll talk about various technologies, uh, UPSs, batteries, generators, air conditioners, which choices do you have, what is the right fit for when, etc., etc. So this is going to, uh, although it sounds a professional, always sounds a bit like foundation, a lot of customers that come through this uh, course you know, are really saying like, wow, this is so much information, it's really, really good because now I can go back and make immediate improvements or now I know how to deal with design issues, etc. So really nice course and of course uh, all closed with an exam to make sure that you test the knowledge of the students who have been there for the last two days. CBCS, this is the next step, uh, a three-day course. And in this course, basically what we do, we take the knowledge of the CDCP and start building on top of that. So this will go into far more detail. So in this course, you will find more what I sometimes call the engineering stuff. Yeah, things like how to calculate the gas or fire suppression systems, uh, how to calculate the battery, how to calculate your power and cooling requirements for the building, etc. Now, I do appreciate that not everybody 
has to go maybe to that level of detail because they think I am not going to design it. I have my contractor and uh, he or she will do it all for me. But as a customer, you would really like to know that you know, your data center is not under spec or over spec. Sometimes, and not talking bad about contractors, but in fairness, we all make mistakes. Sometimes certain contractors have a bias for a particular vendor because these guys are giving some nice commission back if they are able to close a deal. And you as a customer don't want to be dealing with that. You want an impartial advice. So with this particular course, you will be an absolute good sparing partner with whoever you talk to, whether it's with vendors or whether it is with contractors and designers. You can really ask the right questions and even do some double checking to challenge the design and make sure it's really fit for your needs and that you don't spend too much money uh, uh, that is not required. If you have done that course, you might want to go to the CDCE. This is the ultimate course that puts you at the highest level in the industry. Five day course. And what we're going to do in this course is to take the knowledge that you have gained from the CDCP and CDCS and apply it in a real project. Obviously in a real project, I mean a real project on paper. Okay, so here we're going to challenge you. We're gonna say here is a organization they would like to build a data center. These are the requirements for the IT. You tell me, how much space do I need in the building? How much power do we need to ask from the utility company, et cetera, et cetera. Then we go through design drawings. Here's the designs that the consultant came back with. Please review and take out the mistakes out of the electrical drawing, out of the architectural design, et cetera, et cetera. So here we spend about 60 to 70% of our time really going through the typical things that you have to go through when you actually do a project. A lot of customers really like this one because it's so hands-on and so practical. And again, if, you know, since we come out of the data center industry, we know the typical mistakes contractors make. Uh, and that is what we have put, of course, in those uh, template business cases as well. So really, really enjoyable course. So that is a bit what we have on the design and build. Um, again, for detailed outlines, uh, please refer to our website. For operations and governance, we have basically also a framework. Uh, here are the courses listed. Uh, the first course, the CDFOM, it's a three-day course, and this is really aimed at those you know, involved in the day-to-day -day, uh, governance, maintenance, and operations of data centers. So here we will talk about how do you set up the organization, uh, how do you go about security management, floor management, uh, staging, uh, change management in data centers, and so forth. Um, again, really practical with a lot of examples about what can go wrong in typical data centers and what are the key things to, to make sure you have in place. Very, very valuable. Uh, and again, uh, a lot of people are dealing with this on a day-to-day basis, so a very good matching course for that. Three-day course, full of energy and full of information. Great course. Another course, the CDRP, the Certified Data Center Risk Professional. This is a two-day course, uh, also a very interesting course. Uh, but surprisingly, some customers say, oh, I don't need this course, risk management, you know, everything is well designed, we're running already a couple of years very nicely, so we don't need it. Well, that sounds all great, but sometimes I ask the customer the question. Well, you told me your data center is very, very important. And of course, the customer will always confirm that because in fairness, data centers are very important in today's uh, world. So then sometimes I ask them, do you know the cost of downtime? So let's assume your data center goes down today at 11 o'clock till 12 o'clock. How much money did you lose? Indirect and direct cost. And I can guarantee you that 99% of the customers actually don't know. So if you don't know your actual cost of downtime, how can you then justify that extra generator that you want to buy for redundancy? How can you go to your boss and say, I want half a million dollars because he will ask you why? Justify it. And if you can say, well, we're losing $2 million per hour, so this gen set that's going to run for the next 10 years uh, to support us uh, could basically take that risk away. I can guarantee you, you get the money tomorrow. But if you say, I have no clue, but we are critical, then you will never get the dollars because you can't make a proper business case. And again, risk is not just from a technical perspective, do we have redundant power and cooling, but also from a human perspective, etc. Right? Sometimes risks come from regulatory requirements that suddenly change. So this course will, in a thorough methodology, explain to you how you go about analyzing risk there from there on you can build your actual business plans and support it. Another course that is very, very uh, popular at this moment is the CDMS, the Certified Data Center Migration Specialist. A two-day course, again, very practical, 
uh, because what is happening in this industry is that there are many, many migration projects. Uh, customers that we see are migrating data centers because they're running out of steam in the existing one, no more power, no more cooling, not enough space, and they need to move. We also see a lot of consolidation projects going on. Where we have, you know, maybe 10, 20 data centers, regional data centers, and we're going to combine it into a single one for management purposes, cost purposes, whatever it is. So this whole list and shift that you need to go through is very, very, very tough. I sometimes jokingly say, I'd rather build a 100,000 square feet data center instead of moving a 10,000 square feet data center. Because moving is so much more difficult than building from scratch. So this course uh, will guide you through all the things you need to think about, even questions like, do you actually really have to move? Have you looked at all the options already that could actually prevent you to move in the first place? Because moving is obviously a risky and costly undertaking. So that's why we have in governance and operations. And then the last track, the standards and compliance uh, track. Now, the standards and compliance track, again, is a three-level uh, uh, course, the CTDC, CTIA, and CTEA. So those are the three courses that we have. Uh, and it's all based on the TIA 942 standard. Now, for some of you not so familiar maybe with the standards around us, uh, here you see a chart with some of the standards and guidelines you typically hear about when you are dealing with data center design and build. And as you can see, the TIA 942 is by far the most chosen option for data center design and build companies. A lot of uh, the uh, uh, standards have been sold, and it's not a cheap book. It's about 520 or 530 US, so you're not going to download that just for the fun of it. So it is really a leading uh, standard in the market. Now, what we have done in 2013, uh, EPI closed an agreement with TIA where we developed for them the uh, consultant and auditor scores. Uh, and that basically took us a year to get all together because it's a very, very uh, you know, thick uh, course, I would say, with a lot of details. So that took a while. Um, in terms of the course outline, as I said, you know, there are three courses in this program, the CTDC, CTIA, and CTEA. But what we need before customers can actually go into the CTDC, they must have at least done the CDCP or something equivalent in the market. Now, why is that? Well, I will explain that to you when I talk about the CTDC, which is a three-day course. The CTDC is basically taking the students through the standards to explain what is the design intent. However, the course is not going into the technical explanation. To give you a simple example, for a, the example, the standard might say, um, the data center must have a VFI class UPS. Now, in the course, we are not going to explain again what is a VIF class uh, UPS, because if we have to explain all the technology again, then the course becomes a 20-day course, which obviously doesn't make sense. So, that's why we said they must have at least a basic understanding of technical aspects. So if we talk about an air conditioner, we talk about the chiller, they know what it is and what it does. Uh, and then the CTDC will explain how many you need, how do you need to install it, et cetera, et cetera. So that is uh, where the prerequisite actually comes in. Very interesting course, going through the whole standard. So people that come out of this course really will understand all the design requirements for the data center based on this particular standard. Once they have passed, they could go to the next level, which is the CTIA, which is the Internal Auditors course. Now, this course is actually not a technical course, but it's an auditors course, an internal auditors course. Now, what does an internal auditor normally do? The internal auditors are normally preparing the organization to undergo an external audit, which is done by external auditors, uh, typically also called uh, party auditors. So, the CTIA will help the organization to prepare for this. That means they understand all the documentary requirements. Uh, they have, since they went through the CTDC, a good understanding of the requirements of the standards. So by right, they could already go through the organization, look at the designs at a reasonable good level of detail to understand whether they might have some shortfalls that they probably want to fix before calling in an external auditor. And then we have the CDEA. Uh, that one is scheduled for release this year. Um, it's probably going to be either a three or five uh, day uh, course. 
the reason that it has not been released yet is for the simple reason that the standard, the TIA 942, is undergoing a change at this moment. So um, it hopefully will be released somewhere in Q2, Q3, the standard that is, and we will at the same time then also release the CTEA. We didn't want to release a standard uh, training people and then after two months they have to undergo uh, maybe a retraining. So that's why we left that uh, for later, so to speak. For those that are certified for CPDC or any of the other uh, programs in this range, uh, they will be listed on the TIA-942.org website, so they get instant recognition of their status. And also this site will attract quite a lot of people that are looking at uh, uh, organizations and consultants and auditors that can help them uh, to build up the data center. So in that sense, you get free marketing, so to speak, for yourself and your organization. EPI has also developed uh, some IT training uh, because, as you know, IT is really undergoing a lot of change as well. And in that range, we have developed three courses, the CITP, CITS, and CITE. Now, again, it shows as a staggered approach, but the good news about these courses is that you don't have to go through the CITP before you can go to the CITS, etc. So you can jump in basically at any level that you think is the right fit. Now, you can imagine that it probably doesn't make sense for somebody who just comes out of school to jump straight into a CTIE course, because that is really aimed at IT senior management and directors. So you probably want to go at a lower level. And in the brochures, uh, we do uh, some uh, description in terms of some of the soft prerequisites, so to speak, uh, before you jump into a certain level. The beautiful thing about these uh, courses are uh, because there is a lot of IT training in the market, as you probably know. Uh, the beautiful thing about this course range is that it is fully aligned with the ECF, which is the European Competence Framework. Uh, this is uh, put together by over 300 organizations under the uh, European uh, Union uh, umbrella, and they have basically come up with the skills required in IT, and our courses are perfectly aligned with that one. So how does it work? Well, basically, uh, it's the first and will only at this moment uh, course that is mapped to the ECF. Uh, and again, it looks at the whole range of the competences required in the IT. Uh, in the ECF model, they've described about 40 competences uh, that are required in the various job roles. So in that sense, it provides an absolute great foundation for anybody working in the IT. Uh, but of course, there are always specialized courses that can help you with certain subject matters uh, should you wish to desire to go for them. And to give you a good idea on how it really works, um, here is a, a copy out of the ECF, uh, just a portion out of it. And on the left-hand column, you see some of the competences that are described in the uh, ECF. So they talk about you need to understand uh, IT strategy, uh, the IT organization, etc., etc. Now, in the industry, in the middle co column, you'll see there are quite a few courses addressing you know, these particular areas, although there are a few that are not really addressed by courses that we are at least familiar with at this moment. And as you can see on the right-hand column, uh, the uh, courses that we have are really mapping to any of the uh, competences in the uh, ECF uh, framework. So again, it's, it's, you know, it's a fantastic uh, way to really broaden your skills. Now again, I could always argue and say I go first through uh, the CITX uh, course, as we call it, and maybe a CITP or maybe a CITS course. And then I want to uh, specialize myself further in, for example, uh, things like IT service management. Of course, ITIL might be a great choice uh, to do on top of that. Okay, so that is a bit about the course frameworks and courses that we have. Again, details can be found on the website. Now, in terms of how EPI normally delivers the courses, we have two options normally, the ILT and VILT, the Interactive uh, Instructor-Led Course uh, or the Virtual Instructor-Led uh, Course. Um, so basically, classroom or uh, training delivered over the web, uh, similar to what we are doing at uh, this moment. Um, training uh, is normally concluded with an exam. Uh, typically, we do it at the end of the training or sometimes uh, within the week thereafter. And the exam can be done in many ways, either paper-based exams or web-based exams, or we also have the ability to do remote proctoring. So you could be sitting at home in the kitchen, so to speak, 
and do the exam at your, uh, 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 at your own leisure. A um, couple of languages uh, that we are supporting, uh, including some of the European languages, and we are expanding in that particular range. Now, one important thing always for every training is the accreditation and the examination. Uh, we have chosen to be accredited and have our exams under Exim. Exim uh, might be familiar to some of you uh, because they're very well known for things like Microsoft Operational Framework, the ITIL Framework, etc., etc. Um, so basically, all courses that EPI delivers to the market are thoroughly vetted by Exim to make sure they are having a proper flow, that they're meeting standards, uh, that they truly vendor independent, etc., etc. And Exim is also writing the exam. So we are totally disconnected, so to speak, from the exam institute. So in that sense, it's really impartial. Okay. Now, unfortunately, some of the training organizations that we know in the market. They basically write their own exam, they mark their own exam, and they print the, exam, the certificates in their own kitchen, so to speak, which, of course, is not a proper way of dealing with this. Uh, why did we choose Exim? Well, uh, clearly, a uh, global accreditation organization with uh, presence, again, in, in all the parts of the world, uh, totally independent. Uh, they have no links to any manufacturer, etc. Uh, these operating under strict uh, procedures and have a clear focus on the ICT and data center industry. Unfortunately, some of the other accreditations that you find in the market are literally doing primary schools, hairdressers, and other things as well, which might not be appropriate. And again, a very, very large install base of over 2 million people that are certified already. So in that sense, uh, clearly well known. So then the question is, of course, who can actually benefit from these courses? Because the courses might be all nice, but you know who is benefiting from it? Well, of course, anybody who operates a data center. Uh, by having proper skills and competence people, uh, more credibility to your organization, higher more uh, uh, and better staff morale, uh, improved availability and efficiency for sure, because they are able to take out the risk factors. And in that sense, uh, it can always help uh, if you're running a commercial data center for sure to get some trust from your customers. Now, if you are more on the vendor side, so you are in the supply chain, so to speak, of data centers, well, again, this could greatly help you. Um, sometimes in my old previous life, I got to deal with people that knew everything about network cabling, uh, but if they came back with a the design, they put the network cabling straight in front of the outlet of my air conditioning, hindering all the airflow. So I don't accept that anymore in today's market. I want my vendors to be a generalist and a specialist at the same time. I want them to understand what they are doing, what the influence is on the big picture. So again, uh, vendors really help themselves by putting their personnel through this training. And of course, again, it lends to credibility and, and can have a clear sales advantage if your staff is certified and the competitor is not. And then, of course, the benefit for the individual. Uh, we all know that if you have a good resume with proper uh, credentials on it, that will always help you in anything, not only in the work that you do today and in the future, but also if you ever want to seek for another job, uh, this could really help you. It also helps for those that are hiring staff. Um, yes, a certificate doesn't always mean that the uh, particular person is an expert, but it gives absolutely a good level of base understanding of the credentials of this person and the capabilities that they have. So it works both for the individual as well as for organizations. So that is a bit what I have on the data center industry, our training firm framework, uh, the courses, and some of the delivery and accreditation. So now comes maybe an interesting part for you, uh, in addition to all the interesting thing I talked about already, and that is the tools that we have for you. Okay, the good news, tools are free, and that is always a good thing. It's our way of doing something back for the industry. So what do we have for you? Well, first of all, we looked at, say, what are the typical challenges that if you are managing data center staff? Now, if I am a data center manager or a human resource manager, clearly I need to make sure that I are, have a proper organizational structure. Okay. Then, of course, I need to understand, you know, what job roles do I have in that, and I need to start describing all the skills and knowledge, and I need to make sure that the right accountabilities and responsibilities are defined, uh, that I don't have too much overlap, because that creates inefficiency and confusion in the organization, uh, proper succession planning, et cetera, et cetera. So once I've done all my homework on that one, 
Now I still need to go through how do I map this against the training that is available in the market. Uh, who gets which kind of training? Uh, is it enough? Is it too, is it too much? Etc. And then, of course, I need to look at not only today, but also the proper, proper uh, uh, roadmap for those people that are working for me. If you are working in the data center, you might have some big challenges as well. You know, what do I need to know and what competence do I need to have in order to be able to do my job today? But also what the organization probably has for me installed, but also maybe what I would like to do for myself in the future. Yeah. Now, if I have figured out what I need, then the question is which training is giving me that? And then I need to make probably a training plan for myself or review what the organization has done for me. And sometimes for those of you who have done your own research and you know what you want, now you have to convince your boss and tell him or her that this is the right course for you. And sometimes that is a challenge as well. So what we have done, we looked at all those challenges that people are facing and came up with some really good uh, guidance uh, for you. The first thing that we have uh, done for you is the DCCF, the Data Center Competence Framework. It's a document, about 80 plus pages. You can download the free from our website. I'll show you later where you can find the information. And this is the world's first and only document in the market that describes all the competences that are required for uh, operating, designing a data center. Uh, this is pretty much following a bit the structure of the ECF, the European Competence Framework for IT. Now, the beautiful thing about this document is that basically it goes through the whole yeah, design cycle or life cycle, I should say, from a data center, all the way from maybe you're planning a data center, you're actually building one, you run it, you enable, and of course you need to manage it over time. So all the competences that you need in all those uh, phases of a life cycle of a data center are described. The other good thing, and this is what really a lot of customers like, is the example job profiles that we've put in there. Um, of course, every organization is different. Some organizations are large, they have expert, medium, and, and novice uh, engineers. Uh, some they have it combined, so the security manager happens to be the safety manager as well, etc. But in a nutshell, it gives you a very good idea of all those job profiles, and you can basically take it as the basis and then customize it to your liking. Now, the way the framework works is, as you can see on the left-hand side, uh, it shows you clearly the different stages of the data center. In the second dimension, uh, you will see the competences that are required in those uh, individual stages. Now you can imagine if I talk, for example, about electrical skills, uh, you need it from a planning point of view, but also from a build point of view, and you probably during the run you need it as well. However, what we have done, of course, is that we have placed it in the most critical part uh, where you need those skills the most. And then on the right column, you can see the proficiency levels that we typically need uh, for the different type of competences. It sounds all very complex, but once you go through the document, you will start understanding it pretty, pretty quickly. Okay. The other thing what is in the document yeah, is an overview of all those competences, including what they entail, and also some of the examples for the knowledge and skills that people might expect for those competencies. And then the other part, and they, like I said, this is what a lot of data center operators uh, like, is the job descriptions. So here you see a quick example of, for example, uh, for a data center manager that gives a summary statement. It talks about the deliverable, the tasks that they typically need to look at, as well as the competence requirements, etc. So uh, download it for free. Have a look at it. Now, where is the DCF uh, applicable for? Well, basically any data center. Whether you are a cloud operator, a hosting provider, or you have your own on-premise enterprise data center. Uh, whether you are using all internal resources or everything is outsourced or maybe a combination, yeah, any type and style of data center can actually benefit from this great document. Now, of course, the document will be used by two parties, uh, individuals itself, because they understand what they really require for their roles, as well as for managers uh, to put the plan together for the resources and, and manage them. Now, we do understand that the tool, uh, the DCCF, is very voluminous and not everybody might want to read through uh, such a large document. So, for those of you who want to get on the road very quickly, we have developed what we call the DCCF Quick Guide. This is an extraction out of the main document, and basically what it does, it lists all those job profiles, about 30 plus, 
give a very quick short description of what it entails so that you can match it with your own organization's description and then it will also highlight some of the training requirements for that particular job role. Uh, the document is available in a couple of languages uh, and those languages will be expanded uh, over time. So that's another tool. Now comes the main tool, the career planning tool that we have developed. Uh, why did we develop that? Because we noticed that a lot of folks had issues with, you know, getting this all described and, and worked out. So what we have done in EPI, we've built a career planning tool around the DCCF. Again, it's a free tool. You can download it, or actually it's not downloadable. It's a software as a service tool running in the cloud. Um, and basically you can look at the website here, the epi-ap.com slash DCPT. Uh, of course, you will be able to find it on the main page as well. Free tool. So what you do, very simple. You go to the uh, website. Uh, fill in some information about who you are, your email address, and then you will get a verification code in your email. And obviously, we had to do that uh, to avoid those automatic robots that, you know, do all kind of funny submissions, etc., and basically bring the website down. So uh, you'll get a verification code. You copy-paste that in the field. You say which country you are uh, residing, and then you basically hit the start button. The next screen will then show you the current job title or job title. So this is basically a list of all the uh, jobs that are typically found in the data center. And you can just click one or multiple uh, if you have a combination of job roles. And then on the right hand side, you will quickly see, you know, what those job roles entail. Again, just to, for you to verify that you pick the right ones. If you already know your future job role, yeah, then you could also opt in that field to click a job role or job roles that you aspire to uh, or that you are planning to go for. Uh, but again, you don't have to do it. Uh, you could do it if you wish to do so. Now, as you can see, there is a button called Show Hide DC Competences. And if you click that one, it will either collapse or expand on the competence requirements. So it basically lists all the competence that you need, including the proficiency level that you are required for that particular job role. Then comes the beautiful thing. In the same screen, it will automatically already show you the training that you really need to go through in order to gain those uh, competences. Uh, it also lists some of the optional training that you might want to consider to make your knowledge much more richer and more prepared for the future. Um, the required and optional training are split out by current job role and future job role, if you did fill in a future job role, of course. Now, as you can see, we have one more button left, and that is in the bottom that says get this report. So what you could do, of course, what is displayed on the screen, you can take your pick from there. Uh, you can basically click on all the course titles and, and get the outline immediately. It's all hyperlinked. Um, or you can say click this, uh, uh, get this report. Um, and you can also have a check mark there that says get me the schedule. So when you click that, what will happen is that you will get an email and in that email, you will find two documents, okay? Uh, those documents are the career planning as well as the appendix, okay? So basically, if you open those documents, and I'll just show you the first one, the uh, career planning plan, it shows you who you are, the details that you filled up. It shows the current job roles that you have uh, entered, uh, including all the proficiency levels, uh, it also does the future if you have filled it up. And then it, on the next uh, page, it will show you the training that you really need to go through in order to gain those competences as well as some of those optional training. And if you click the schedule automatically for the country that you are uh, residing in, the one that you selected on the main screen, it will list all the courses that are available yeah, for these ones that are selected. And you can click on it and require uh, do an inquiry immediately about pricing, availability, et cetera, et cetera. Fully automated. Okay. So this will really, really help you uh, because by right, you could send this even to your boss and say, here it is what I need to know. And can I go for the training, uh, including the course dates? Uh, the tool will also have the other appendix uh, in the email, uh, which basically shows you all the job profiles. So again, you can easily mix and match and find out whether uh, everything is matching the things that you are doing today. So those are the three tools that we have available for you. If you want to have more information, you can go to our main website, uh, www.epi-ap.com. And on the right bottom, there are a couple of buttons. 
uh, that you can click. Uh, one of them, as you can see uh, highlighted here, is the EPI Data Center Competence Framework. Or you can go to our website with the extension slash DCCF and uh, enter the page directly, which is this page that you will see. On this page, you will find the main document, the DCCCF, as well as the quick guides. If you want to have a go at the career planning tool, again, you can do that, no obligations whatsoever. You can just you know, uh, enter your details and, and play with it, so to speak, to see what training plans you basically can get. So that is what I would have, and I did it all in 60 minutes very, very nicely. Um, so now I would like to open the floor for any potential questions and answers. Um, for those of you running on tablets, you probably need to tap your screen somewhere in the top, and then you will get a drop-down button where you can open the chat window. Uh, you can ask me questions through the chat window if you wish to do so, or you can uh, click the raise your hand so that I can uh, you know, uh, basically open up the microphone, or if you want, you can open up the microphone and give me a question as well. Uh, the floor is yours, so any questions? Uh, with that, I would say thank you very, very much for attending. I hope this was uh, useful. Um, and again, if you have any questions that later pop into your mind, please feel free to contact your training center or uh, EPI, and we will be very glad to help you. Thank you for attending again, and wish you all a very great day.